I think when the collaboration works, um, you almost, it almost becomes like one thing. How can I make this as, as close to what I would do in a movie? Because at least that way I know I'm not gonna completely fuck it up and, and make his life miserable. I came to this project having just finished Batman Damned mm -hmm. and I, I wanted out at that yeah. point. Okay, if I were Batman and it was really gonna go down right now, what would happen if it were real? And realizing there's no fucking grapple gun. That's not real. I'm not gonna, it's not gonna happen. It's not going to happen. It does not exist. Hi Lee, hi Matson. Thank you for joining us today at Angoulême. Um, first question, how are you guys? Doing great. Doing great. Great. Awesome. I've heard that you met together because you're coming from two, let's say, different worlds, different artistic worlds, um, through Jim Lee, through Instagram Jim Lee. Uh, Jim Lee's Instagram about the posts, and then you entered in contact ex to some exchange about um, in fact, uh, the movie also, The Devil, but we'll get back to that. And then you became friends through uh, weekly Skype sessions. And then you started to think about doing something together, uh, about work, um, original creation, let's say. And we ended up with A Vicious Cycle, which we are going to talk about today. Uh, my first question about that would be, I'm curious about the creative process around this title, because I know it's a co-creation. You've worked together on every step and um, how was the working relationship between the two of you? Did each of you do his own part, lead the art and you match in the script or were there some back and forth between the two of you all along? We definitely do our own parts in that I haven't drawn anything <laughs> in this book and would never never go anywhere near it and Lee hasn't, Lee hasn't written, written, written any of it. Yeah. But it is a collaboration mm -hmm. in that um, there will be times where I'll get hung up on a detail or stuck on something and rather than just bang my head against the wall, we'll talk about it. And same thing, there'll be some times where he'll be in the middle of a page and there'll be a, a detail or a panel or, or something that I, he's thinking about changing or isn't making sense for, for what I wrote or we're thinking ahead into the future of what we want to lay something in and we'll talk about it again. And so it. It never feels like oh, I have the baton and now I've passed it to him and I'm yeah. not thinking about it anymore. It's kind of like we both hold it at the same time and uh, we, we just support each other every, yeah. every step of the way. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's it. We are doing your own uh, parts, but with the advices or thoughts about the other collaborator. When, I think when the collaboration works, um, you almost, it almost becomes like one thing, you know what I mean? Where, where, um, yeah, it, it, of course, you know, like uh, Matson's writing scripts and they're full scripts and they're, you know, they're, um, they're detailed and they have everything that I need, you know, to, to move forward. And then when I am doing the artwork, um, you know, obviously there's more conversations to be had, just like Matson said, but that when I think the collaboration works between two creatives, you, you start to get, it starts to get more seamless. Like who did, I did this or you did this. It starts to become much more of like a, a, a we thing mm -hmm. as opposed to, oh me or, 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 or him. And I think that's good, you know, because you can transmit that to a reader. And, and I think that um, the opposite end of that can also be very seen you know we, there are some projects where you you see some um yeah the 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 combination of the two chemicals doesn't quite create that that um uh, desire effect mm -hmm. you know yeah so we got i think we've had a great like it's been a great experience in that way so far and that it feels like a very unified uh, vision, you know. Yeah, okay. When we imagine a collaboration between the two of you, um, the first quick thing that comes to mind would be a work linked to Batman, obviously. Um, this is something that you quickly dismissed 
first of all, as I understand, out of a desire to do something else, but perhaps also so has not to be restricted in your storytelling or in creative possibilities, maybe? What do you think about that? I, I think that for, for me, um, my, my book, Batman the Imposter mm -hmm. and A Vicious Circle, they, they kind of started at the same time. Okay. And so, um, you know, Bat, Bat, my Batman, um, Andrea was already involved and that has kind of become, in the comic book world, my Gotham. Like, it's, it's very hard for me to picture doing any Batman without Andrea at this point because I, I also have a, a very close-knit collaboration with him in, in, in that world and I really honor and respect it. Um, and, then, and then simultaneously, uh, just selfishly for me, Lee, Lee has years and years of, of doing Batman with, with, with Brian and some of his own, own work that he, that he wrote as well. And so, I, you know, in a way, I, I kind of feel like, well, I'd, I'd be coming into, into that as opposed to laying out my own work. So selfishly, it's like I, I kind of want the fresh territory. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's been the great thing of, of doing something creator-owned with him is because he is, is just full. And I'm, I'm sure if we were to ever do a Batman, it would be surprising, but also not as surprising as, as this because mm -hmm. it's just, it's, he's done so many things that I, I, I didn't know he could do. And so it's just like the... the, the the process of just going into totally new territory, like that was very, very exciting for, for me of being such a huge fan of everything that he's done. I totally, totally agree. I totally agree. It, 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 I, and I came to this project having just finished Batman Damned mm. and, and I, I wanted out at that yeah. point. I, I wanted to do something different, something more challenging, something that I had never done before. So uh, um, a lot of people say, you know, ask me that too. Like, why didn't you guys just do a Batman project? It seems like it makes perfect sense. And at that time, it was the last thing yeah, that made no, sense I, to me. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't want to, and I didn't want to just, you know, um, pigeonhole Matt's in that way either. In the sense where it was just like, oh, you're writing this Batman. Movie. Let's do a Batman book together. You know, like it, it felt like a the perfect opportunity to to do something new and mm -hmm. really see what you know. Yeah. yeah. Flip the table, start from a white paper and we'll see, let's see. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, interesting that you said that you started working on this project right after Batman Damned. If I remember correctly, you told me that Batman Damned was the one of the first work on which you took full charge of the artistic side, from the drawing to the colorization, too? It's the first project I colored, yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, something that you wanted to do for a long time, it was quite an, an objective for you, yeah. and would like to be able to continue on your next works, mm -hmm. which you did on A Vicious Circle. Um, even more for the artistic part of A Vicious Circle, you also choose um, to use or represent a different graphic style for mm -hmm. each, every era uh, visited or traveled by the characters, because I guess otherwise it would not be challenging enough, maybe. <laughs> uh, um, is this something you hated yourself for during working on the project? <laughs> 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 okay. Choosing this? So, in, in the, during the first book, Mattson will remember this, there's there was a moment in time where I freaked out. Mm. I had a little freak out and I was not liking what I was doing at that time. I didn't feel like it was, um, when I look back on it now, I know what it was. And that was me doing exactly what we talked about doing on this project was stepping out of my comfort zone, yeah. being challenged. And he came to me with this idea and it that he threw down like the gauntlet through was thrown down and it was like okay do you want this here you go like ride the bike you know and 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 so when i kind of got through that little moment you know um it's not that it got easier necessary or, or, or it, it certainly did not get less challenging because i mean i just I, i'm working on a double page spread right now with genghis khan alexander the great 
and like it doesn't get easy. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> but but at the same time, I'm into it now in a different way. Where I I've seen the first couple books, and I know that I can do it without embarrassing myself totally. So that uncomfortable moment in the first book was a growing pain. I had to kind of push through that and just, you know, it was me doing something new and going outside of the comfort zone. And sometimes that is a freak out because mm-hmm. my stuff is very codified, you mm-hmm. know? Um, so, uh, it, but it, that was exactly what I needed. I needed that um, artistically and emotionally. I, I, I needed it. So, I think the other thing about that episode that was great for us as as partners is that you let me in on that like yeah you didn't, you didn't hide that you yeah. didn't hide you were going through that and yeah. so i got to see what it was without like it didn't make me freak out good <laughs> <laughs> and uh i i did the things that i could to really cheer you on yeah yeah, yeah and yeah. and some of that seemed to work some of that was just you then getting getting back to work um but it also, I, I think that it, it made our collaboration closer. Yeah. And I, I, at, at yeah. one point, I remember you saying something, I'm, I'm not gonna quote, quote it directly correct, but saying something of, of how you were frustrated because you were changing styles and it still felt like you. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. and I, I, in your mind, you had this idea that it would be somebody else. Yeah. And, and I, I, I feel like I said this to you, but maybe I just thought it, I can't remember, but it was basically like, yeah, of course it's you. Like it has, it has to be <laughs> it has you. To be, yeah. It's, it is like a, um, it's, it's like a musical artist who uh, plays in one genre and then starts playing in another genre. It's yeah. still their voice. Yeah. And I, I want it to be your voice. Like I'm doing this book with you. Otherwise, we should just hire 16 other artists and have them do the do the other things. And I and I think that that's the frustration that you were feeling. But it was it also was. Yeah. yeah, like you got through it. And it's like I, I love that at the same time. Every time that there's a style jump, it seems like a different artist. Like it is so. Yeah. It like there's such a huge contrast. But also, I see you. Like yeah, I, I see him in that. Yeah. And it's like I. So it doesn't feel like one of those annual issues where it's like 30 artists right, have come in right, and done yeah, yeah. one page and then another right. page. I hate those, honestly. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. like, it still feels like, oh, no, two people authored this and that's what it is. I had this idea that I would be able to do, that I would be able to completely transform. And it's just not, I, I, you know, it, yeah, won't, still it, just, you. it won't happen. And I guess that there was that part of me that thought that, um, pretty ignorantly that thought that it would be like a cover band or something like that but like I'm glad that's not what it is mm-hmm. at the end of the day I'm glad that, that that I had to butt my head up against that but um, yeah when, when people ask me that a lot like is it easy is it easy to make the, the style change and there's yeah, of course an it is. element <laughs> of, there's an element of difficulty but the r- truly frustrating thing at the beginning was why can't I just completely be a different person? <laughs> like it's, you know, why, why, why not? Why, you know, why doesn't it look like Frank quietly? <laughs> you know, yeah. like, like there is that moment where, um, anyway, that crazy artist shit. What yeah, I, <laughs> I totally agree with Matt's point of view. We, we feel all along the first chapter of the book, tributes, references, but through your heart and that gives us a kind of a visual continuity mm-hmm. but also changes and those tributes and well, we also talked at the beginning about like well we can't really go super cartoony for one mm-hmm. sequence like there's certain things you can't do because they do take you out I think of the experience a little bit more like if I was to I don't know, all of a sudden do like a Humberto Ramos style or something like that. I can't think of a better example, but you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. where I completely changed the character's physi- you know, mm-hmm. physiognomy just yeah. in, in basis of the style. So that was a good rule, I think. Yeah, at us. one point you had talked about doing something that was like way more like anime, yeah. manga, yeah. and then it was kind of like, ooh, that, yeah. that actually, like if we change the form of the faces, like it's 
it's going to take yeah, them out. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had that. Yeah, I remember that, remember that conversation. Um, was this story formats three? It's a huge chapter in terms of paginations, um, which actually departs somewhat from the mainstream comic book format. Uh, something you decided from right at the beginning. Is it related, maybe? to the fact that you, Matten, um, come from the movie background and preferred to be able to have the time to set up the story. You, you talked about Batman the Imposter, um, which is also in three chapters, uh, shorter than Vicious Circle, but also this structure, this narrative structure. It might be longer, actually. It's longer. Yeah, because yeah, it's, yeah. it's the same number of pages. It's 52, I think, pages per, per issue, but then in Imposter, I... I got nervous because I was squishing too much. So okay. I, I begged them for six more pages, and okay. they gave them to me. <laughs> okay, okay, great. Yeah. Um, and um, is this structure something you're comfortable with and wanted to keep without, like you said, for imposter being rushed to push yeah. a lot of things? Yeah. It's for me. It was definitely because these are my first two books. There, mm -hmm. it was a uh, a safety mechanism for me because it. It's, it's on the one hand, it's a lot of space, and it's also, it's three, beginning, middle, end. So act one, act two, act three. So structurally, I understand it, and I understand what each issue is supposed to be. Um, and you know, when I, when I look at something that's 22 pages, I start to sweat, because I'm just like, you, you know, the, the plane's taking off, oh, we gotta land the plane. Like, it's, mm -hmm. they're so fast that, um, it just it just felt like I, I wanted to have space to be able to really uh, and honestly make sure I understood how to write a comic book. Mm. Um, now I'm starting to, to do some some new books and that format is starting to, to change a little bit. You know now I'm, I'm doing something that's going to be four issues and so I'm wrapping my head around that. But but for me I'm I'm on a, a, a journey and this is still so early in, in my comics career that I, I hope for it to be a long journey. But so yeah, I, I think that for the first two, having it be that format, it, it really was, how can I make this as, as close to what I would do in a movie? Because at least that way I know I'm not gonna completely fuck it up and, and make his life miserable. Okay, yeah. Um, in your first discussions between the two of you, you realized that you were both fan of the, f the film I Saw the Devil, um, which in fact was the starting point of your thoughts on what would become a vicious circle. Um, the story of the movie is a harsh and compromising revenge. Um, I don't know if it's possible to answer this question without spoilers, but you, you'll you decide. Um, having seen the movie, and liked it a lot too, uh, there's a kind of inversion in the roles between the hero and the villain. Mm. Uh, particular to me in the final third. Is this something that could also be found in Virtual Circle along the way? Something we could expect? Definitely. Um, I, I think that every good... I, for, for me, revenge is not black and white. And I think that at, at face value, it's okay, you, somebody is wronged and they want to get even. Uh, we all have that primal instinct inside of us, which is why revenge stories are so successful. It's why we like them. It's why we lean into the, the kind of the fun of that violence. But the reality is, is that like once you start seeking revenge, you start to take a dark path towards villainy. And I think that every great revenge story, whether or not it's uh, I Saw the Devil, or even something like Kill Bill, you know, we, we get to the end of Kill Bill, we get to, we get to the, you know, that last 45 minutes, and suddenly everything becomes much more complicated. And suddenly you're at a point of, I've really enjoyed watching her kill 200 people through this process, and now I'm in this point where I'm like, maybe stop. Maybe, maybe we don't need to keep going. And I, I think that those are the best revenge stories. And so, yeah, for, for us, without getting into any of the details, um, it wouldn't be a story if it was just something bad has happened and now I'm going to kill you. Like, that's not a story. Like A story is something bad happened to me and I'm going to try to kill you and along the way I'm going to lose my soul. Yeah, okay. Um, 
although we are in a science fiction atmosphere with the notion of time travel, for example, um, in this chapter I personally felt very much the human psychological aspect, which you started to talk about, uh, about the notion of revenge, the cost, uh, the weight of this human duality between the two characters, uh, which are kind of negative mirror each other. Um, that made me think a little about the Quantum Leap TV show, uh, where time travel is a way, kind of the skeleton of the background, but it's what gives body to the story, and which are actually the characters, their relationships, and how it's evolved along the way. Was it something on that you went for? Yeah, for I, I, I think that for, for me, for, for, for both of us, you know, you need, for a story like this, you need the time travel, you need the action, you need the dinosaurs, like all of those things are, they're very fun, and they are part of uh, the, the, the mechanism in which you sell it. And uh, it, it, it's also the mechanism of, of the kind of the dream of it, the excitement of it. But none of that matters if there isn't emotion. Mm. And when I when I look at when I look at his work and what he's done, it's like, you know it, I could say every page is my favorite page, but like really like if I if I had to choose one page in this first chapter that's my favorite, it's right before that first jump in time where it's the three of them of 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 Thacker, his wife, and his son, and we're seeing the hot mo heart monitor jag that separates them into these three triangles, and it's just the close-up of the faces with all of them having this emotion of, we're about to be pulled apart forever to say goodbye. And even though we don't understand that that's quite what's happening, it's just the, the way that he uh, gives us this, this really shockingly human moment that's rendered so, hey, you're so in their faces, it's so intimate. And for for me, I'm like, that's the best. That's like that's that's it. Yeah, there's the, like I remember we talked early on about how um, the the science of the of the time travel was not something we even wanted to mm -hmm. get into that much, yeah. you know, because it's not interesting. It, it when ultimately like it, it, I don't care how they built the time machine in Terminator. I, I want I want to see Kyle Reese save. You know Sarah mm -hmm. Connor, like that's the that's the part of that story that's interesting, and so yeah, the the emotional care, you know, the character stuff, and and I think there's some good. Um, each issue, each book has that has a moment kind of like that, you know, where there's a, a character moment that to me feels like the third book specifically has, I think, a real serious character moment where. You know, yeah, it's great to draw, you know, sci-fi and, you know, action sequences and stuff like that. But me too. I think that ultimately the, 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 the most rewarding panels that I've done in this are the emotional panels. Yeah. Like the quiet, you know, scenes. Choosing to start the story with the black and white sequence, um, you said that it was kind of a, not reference, but a Wizard of Oz setup. Um, why did you choose that to bring a specific emotion to the reader or just an artistic choice? We talked, we talked about that from the very beginning as being kind of a good way, not only to kind of jolt readers when like color comes into play, like you know you're in a different mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not in Kansas of, anymore. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> But um, it, I, yeah, I draw stuff realistically, but I'd never done anything quite as naturalistic as the opening sequence, where I was actually trying to kind of strip style away from it, where, you know, I just wanted to get as close as I could to something that felt, I don't want to say style less, but something that could um, feel so much like, to the reader, like, like like something real that it lulls them into this kind of happy family life and uh, idyllic kind of kind of situation that then that just that alone 
is another way to rip the reader out of a comfort comfort zone when you go to this kind of more harshly lit color Blade Runner kind of world, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, we talked about all that stuff kind of at the beginning of the, the, the process. All that stuff was very purposeful, you know, like yeah. those choices. Yeah, okay. Um, Madsen, a quick word on Batman Imposter. Mm -hmm. First of all, thank you for this super dark and psychological tale. Um, did this story came from elements you had worked on when writing the Batman movie? and that you were keen on to share with the readers and compact um, or is it just something that came after and you'd also like to share? Kind of a, kind of a mix of both. I, I came into working with Matt Reeves on the first Batman movie pretty late. Mm -hmm. um, you know, most of, most of the uncredited work that I, I did on that film was in the third act and so at, at that point so much of the movie had been set and um, I really, I loved what Matt was doing, and I loved the the, the way in and the, the, the grounded, realistic approach. Um, that that to me is the, the, the most exciting version of, of, of Batman, one where he's really human and vulnerable, and he's not he's not superhuman and having every ability in the world. He's not James Bond. It's like he can he can get hurt, he can make mistakes, um, and so I, I had a lot of ideas and a lot of like just at, born out of excitement. Uh, and a lot of those ideas just could not apply to the movie because so much had been done. So I, it's not even stuff that I wouldn't pitch. But things like, okay, you know, I would I would leave Matt's office after after working on the third act and and step outside and on in Hollywood and be on be on Sunset Boulevard and look around at the buildings and go, okay, if I were Batman and it was really going to go down right now, what would happen if it were real? And realizing there's no fucking grapple gun. That's not real. I'm not. Gonna, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It does not exist. And so then, just going, what what would happen? And then realizing, oh, it would be more like Grand Theft Auto. It would be more like fucking Heat. And so then, starting thinking about that and going, okay, if I were Batman and I really wanted escapes, it's like I'd put motorcycles all around the city, hidden in some some way, so that you know. At any given mile, I'm a, at any given moment, I'm a quarter mile away from one of my motorcycles, and so I could just go sprint, hop on one, and then the idea of zip lines and having a network of zip lines that I'm putting up. So just thinking about like the really granular detail of, of how it would actually work, and we've seen that in comics um, over the years, and, and I just kind of felt like uh, it's it, the the approach we've seen, but the details we hadn't quite, and um, so I. I, I finished working on that first movie and I just had a pile of these ideas and nowhere to put them and so I, I called up the executives at, at DC I called Chantal Nong and I asked her could I could I meet with somebody at DC Comics because I, I just I have all these ideas and I don't have anywhere to put them and uh, she she blew my mind because she was I, I was expecting to to sit with an intern and she was like oh yeah yeah I'll set you up with Jim Lee <laughs> and, so, and so that that well, okay. Yeah, that that, that was a, a, a scary day, um, and so that, that that's kind of how it started. It was really born out of um, a love for the character, and then just having so much ideas out of the excitement, and then going, I, I think I still have more to say. Was it your suggestion, or Andrea's choice, or both of your discussions, to give this Batman imposter look uh, Robert Pattinson-ish vibe, or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I the the vibe definitely. Okay. Um, you know, when when we were working on the book, the movie was shooting, mm -hmm. um, so there there wasn't a, the trailer wasn't out, no images were out. Um, so a lot of it that Andrea executed was just off of a description that I was giving, which is uh, similar to the movie, similar vibe of you know he he's doing it all himself. You know, there's no Lucius Fox. There's no yeah. you know it's not Batman via James Bond. Mm -hmm. It's it's a guy like going to a military surplus store looking like a homeless man and just like buying a bunch of like plates of bulletproof armor and just like duct taping them to his arms like that that to me is cool and exciting and dangerous uh, and so Andrea took that and so yeah I mean for for me it was uh, there are obviously big differences between mm. the world of the movie and the world yeah, of the sure. imposter. You know, there's no Gordon, there's no Alfred. Yeah. Like, like those are big, big different choices. Um, but also, it's still like tonally. Like, I wanted them to be like, okay, like, well, if you like the movie, you're gonna like the book. 
Yeah, Th that was the, the last question for you. Uh, I'd like. I loved the fact that you um, removed um, Alfred mm -hmm. Gordon on the way yeah. and use different new characters. Yeah. But we have still this deep psychological connection between them. Yeah. It was. Astonishing. I like that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, my last question will be for you, Lee, um, about Dear Detective. Mm. Uh, bringing together all the variant cover you've done from, for uh, Detective Comics to make a real story out of something was something actually you thought about straight from the beginning of working on the variant covers, um, which again represent quite a daring and challenging uh, exercise. Uh, why this choice using covers to tell a story? So uh, right around the same time Mattson and I started talking, I started Detective Comics and again I had this like I've just done this big Batman project and uh, I've done a lot of Batman. What, how do I make myself excited about doing these, these covers? And um, <clears throat> I think that the beginning of the idea was, I don't think they're going to let me do this because at that point in time, I didn't feel like the relationship was even mm -hmm. such where I could do something like that. But it was just my own personal way in to those okay. covers. And so I did seven sketches at the beginning. And the seven sketches was the suit up sequence in the Batcave. So I had the, you know, the, the, putting on the masks that, that's the back cover. I had the, you know, glove mm -hmm. thing. I had it, the cape walking towards the Batmobile. Like, I had that kind of sequence, and I thought, that's cool, that's cool, because I can actually go somewhere after that. What, what, what does he do? Do I do a night, a day in the life of Batman? But then, as you're doing covers, the reality of doing a cover gig is that you can't just do what you want every month. So they come at you and they say, look, we need a Two-Face cover or we need a Mr. Hyde cover. And I'm like, who the fuck is Mr. Hyde? I've never heard of Mr. Hyde before. <laughs> so you, the, 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 the initial idea was to do a night of Batman looking for a kid that's been kidnapped. And all those covers are represented in the, in the book. And then the monkey wrench gets thrown in along the way of we need a Mr. Hyde cover and so you have to do the Mr. Hyde cover and you have to do a you know uh, you have to figure out then okay well, how does this fit into my story and so what initially started off being way more narrative became okay let's forget about traditional narrative about A plus B equals C and you know Let's think about this as, if we're gonna treat this as just a Batman, a Batman book, mm. it doesn't have to be a traditional story and that everything makes perfect sense and is interconnected. It has to feel like something that you could give this to a reader and just say, hey look, you don't have to know anything about Batman continuity. This is just a, a Batman book. It's 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 iconic. It's just you're gonna have every or almost every villain, you know. And the way to do that was, oh, okay, so Batman has these allies and he has these villains. So let's do a sequence with the allies and a sequence with the villains. And the sequence with the allies brings you to Robin and the death of Robin and uh, you know, it just it was a way for me to kind of say, hey, look, this is. There's a, if, if you're a reader of Batman or not a reader of Batman and you can use your imagination, the book becomes something where the reader kind of is telling them their, mm. themselves the story, you know? And so the connective tissue part of it came later when um, uh, at, a, at a certain point I, I, I was, you know, watching, going down YouTube rabbit holes and I discovered the fact that they solved the Jack the Ripper case with DNA and that it was the Polish guy, you know? And I was fascinated. I was like, whoa, that's crazy. So, and it disproves some of those letters 
So like clearly now some of those letters were just written by random people, you know? And, and I thought, oh, that's cool. I can do like Jack the Ripper type letters. Who's writing these letters? I don't want it to just be a, I don't want to make a choice. I don't want it to be a, a, a specific villain. I want it to be something way more iconic and kind of um, gets to the essence of what Batman is, which is it's a man against crime. You know, like it's him against crime. Yeah. And then it, it, my, my editor was the one who said, well, you know, let's do these ciphers and just make it a slight. And at first I was like, that's gimmicky. I don't, I don't want to do that. And at a certain point, though, I kind of came around to the idea and was just like, OK, let's just find a way to fucking play with this and make it absolutely something that's not typical. Yeah. And it came out and everybody complained. <laughs> so, so, so there, there you go. It was like, oh, you're just uh, capitalizing on covers and story doesn't make sense and you know all this different kind of stuff. Uh, okay, okay. Hey, it was an experiment. Yeah. You know. I, yeah. I. Uh, it, that's that's all I can say at the yeah. end of the day. Was like I've done a lot of Batman. I've done a lot of stories. Some of them make more sense than others, but like, you know, here you go, here's something new. Like you said, it's an experiment, it's a proposal. Yeah. The readers are then free to understand, to uh, acknowledge it or not, but you still have. And maybe some right. other artists will come along and say, I could do this better. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then they'll do it better. Yeah. And, maybe. You know? But, uh, but. So, who knows? Who yeah, knows? Exactly. It, is, it is what it is, but it's out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, great. Thank you very much for your answers. I uh, can't wait to read the second and third chapter of A Vicious Circle. Can you uh, maybe share words about your upcoming projects or, or something you work in on right now? Just as a teaser. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm working on uh, The Batman Part 2. Yeah. I'm working on a uh, Terminator animated television show okay. that I think will be coming out this year. Okay. Um, I'm working on the feature adaptation of Keanu Reeves' Berserker okay. comic book. Uh, I'm working on some things I can't talk about, and uh, and we're starting to talk about what we're doing next. Just a few things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, just no to pressure. Feed up a day. Just you a few, know. Yeah. Just, a few, yeah. just a few high profile. <laughs> <Yeah. things. laughs> Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and you'll be working on the third I'm, chapter? I'm finishing the third, yeah. the third book, and, and I have like 20-some pages to go left. And uh, so that's my focus right now. And then, and then we're talking about, you know, something Next. else. And, yeah. and um, I, you know, we'll, we'll see. I have a couple of short things that I've, uh, you know, that I've been thinking about. So I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Let's see. Sure. Thank you again for your time and your answers, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.